on today's show. What if Derek Lively takes a leap? What if Jaden Hardy takes a leap? What if Omax Prosper takes a leap? What if they all three take a leap? What would it mean for the Dallas Mavericks? I'll tell you on today's Locked on Mavericks. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked on Mavericks podcast. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. You are Locked on Mavs. Great, Rusty. Your daily Dallas Mavericks podcast. No one's dying. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Amazing. Your team every day. I still can't even help you. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it Locked On Maps your first listen today. With the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform. Leave a five-star review. Take us with you. Like the video on YouTube. Comment anything below. Today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. And use that code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Today... We're talking about if Lively takes a leap, if Hardy takes a leap, if Omax takes a leap. What would it look like? How could they get there? What would it mean for the Dallas Mavericks? Let's let's let's, let's look into the future and envision a future full of these young players getting much, much, much better. I'm excited about that. And uh, also, if you missed yesterday's live stream, we posted it on the podcast feed as well as live on YouTube. You missed an all-timer. Just an absolute all-timer with myself and Slightly. And then Isaac Harris being back on the Dallas Locked On Dallas Mavericks podcast. What? Locked On Dallas Mavericks podcast. It's like I haven't done two thousand episodes of this show. Isaac Harris is back. He will be. He will continue to be on this show. Slightly will continue to be on this show. Except neither of them are here today. They both bailed on me today. So now, so now we're just going to talk about this. The irony of doing that whole stream yesterday, and now it's just me. <laughs> oh. You pay them, they come back. <laughs> no, Isaac and Slightly will both, will both be back for sure. And uh, let's get into it. Derek Lively, to me, is the most likely member of these three to take some kind of a leap next season. If you're looking at just the three, I thought about doing, all right, who is most likely to take a leap on the Mavericks? All right, it's just too obvious. So then you have to go a different, a different angle, a different direction, something more interesting. So then it's like, all right, what if Derek Lively takes some kind of leap? So then I'm going to answer for all these guys. Derek Lively, why could they take a leap? What would it take to take a leap? And then what would it do for the Dallas Mavericks? So for Derek Lively, let's start here. Why could he take a leap? Super easy. He's turning 21 in February. We have seen Derek Lively at his worst. Worst. That's awesome. And to me, I think his season last year, if you just look at it in totality, was kind of wild. He comes into the to the NBA. He you know, goes through all the, the pre-draft stuff, doesn't know where he's going to go all of a sudden. Boom, he goes to the Mavericks, gets traded there on draft night. And then in August, he joined, he like goes to the Mavericks practice facility and starts working. And so then we're feeling really good about that. Like, oh yeah, he starts working. He does summer league or he does, he, you know, he d- gets drafted, does summer league. In August, goes to the Mavs practice facility. September, like late September, training camp kind of starts. Or whatever. Then October, he's doing the trip to Abu Dhabi. He's doing this trip to you know Spain. He's doing the, the overseas preseason trip. Comes back. And then in the regular season, here's how his games played out because of injury, illness, and all kinds of stuff. He plays seven games to start the season. Then he's out for one with an illness. He plays seven games. Then he's out with one of the lower back contusion he got with the fall against the Rockets. Then he plays nine more games. And he's out for four games with a left ankle sprain after stepping on Jeremy Grant's foot in a Portland game. He plays six more games after that, then is out for five games with a left ankle sprain for uh, for Scoot Hen- that whole Scoot Henderson thing, another Portland injury. Then he plays seven more games. Then he's out for seven more games with the broken nose he got from Orlando. Then he plays for nine games. He's out for one game because of personal reasons. He plays ten more games after that. And then is out for eight games because of uh, his mother's passing and all that, which he also went through last season. And so to me, you look at just the just disjointedness of his season. He's in, he's out, he's in, he's out, he's in, he's out. He could benefit from some, some consistency, some, you know, some chillness, getting to, to travel and do what he did, working with NBA trainers. I think the consistency is going to help him take a leap next season. Plus, don't get me started on the NBA finals experience that he got. We were talking about Derek Lively as the third most important player on the Mavs, and sometimes he could have been considered the second most important player on the Mavs at times because of his defense. But he played in the NBA Finals, 
18 minutes, 19 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 22 minutes, 24 minutes. I mean, he got some actual playing time in the NBA Finals. Not a lot of rookies get there, and not a lot of rookie centers even get the opportunity to do that. Derek Lively's in a rare position right now that he didn't have a very consistent rookie season. He gets to go to the NBA Finals and helps them get to the NBA Finals. Let's, let's make that clear. And now he can even get even better because he was a 19-year-old, one year at, at Duke, ha- had an up-and-down year at Duke as well because of injury and because of where he was in the rotation and all kinds of weird stuff. And so he has an opportunity to really do a lot next season. So what would it take for him to take some kind of leap? All right. For Derek Lively, I think I think he'd have to play 70-plus games. I think you have to have some consistency. I don't think there's a leap coming where – we go, oh man, he played he played 55 games again, but so, still took a a, leap, a huge leap forward. I don't know. I feel like he's got to have some kind of consistency with it. I think that that's one of the first things that I'm looking at for him. It's just can he can he can he stay on the court? Can he avoid some of these those crazy contact injuries he had? I mean, none of it is stuff that we're super worried about long term. And so that's the, one of the first things. Defensively, this is where I think the leap is going to show up the most. Defensively, I think he has to either maintain the level that he played in, in the in the playoffs, but he probably has to improve to make some kind of a leap. And I'm talking about a leap where he is he's here where he is now as like a solid starter to, oh my gosh, is he like a fringe all-star or like one of the top 10 center types in the, in the NBA? Like that, that's what I'm talking about with some kind of a leap where we go, oh my gosh, Lively got so much better this season. Defense, I think he's got to be elite at the rim. He's almost there already, which is kind of wild. He was very good last season at the rim. I think he'd have to be able to switch on anyone for for a time and the Mavericks be okay with it and not kind of scramble behind him to try and bail him out. I think he's almost there already. He was there in the playoffs. On Synergy, he ranked good in every single defensive category. They have a ranking system that goes from poor, below average, average, good, and very good and excellent. He ranked good, so he's above average. In every category, defending pick-and-roll ball handlers, defending spot-up shots, defending isolation, defending pick-and-roll rollers, and defending post-ups. That's kind of incredible to me. He's already good. So what would a leap take? What would it take for a leap from good? All right, he'd have to be very good in a couple categories. Maybe excellent in a couple categories. That's the ranking on Synergy. To take that to the next level, can he be better defending pick-and-roll ball handlers? The switching element that I talked about earlier. Can he be better on post-ups and on rollers? You know, elite at the rim, the isolation thing, coming over to, and playing help defense. Can he cover up issues for the Mavericks? Can he not only hold his own, but cover up issues that others may cause? Luka, Kyrie playing, you know, regular season, regular, regular season level defense that they do sometimes. Defensively, defensively I think you'd have to show up for him. On offense, I think there's a couple things that we would have to see in order for him to take a leap. The late game free throw issues is something that he's got to really work on. Shot 50.1% from the free throw line in the regular season. 41 of 81 from the free throw line for the whole season. He had that moment in the playoffs where he's running away from Chet because they were intentionally fouling him. And he had that moment with Kyrie. I think that was a huge growth moment for him. And if we want him to start taking some threes eventually, he's the free throws have got to come along. And he's got to start knocking down some of those. Because the, it will happen again. Teams will, will deck a Derek. They'll, ha- they'll hack a Shaq. They'll intentionally foul him to get him on the free throw line. I don't know what I don't know if he could take a leap in my mind with that still being an issue. He he might. Shaq was very good without being able to hit free throws. Dwight Howard, same thing. So it could happen. But I think he'd have to improve the, those late game free throw issues. I think in a short roll, I think he's been he was excellent last season at the Luca is doubled, Kyrie is doubled. I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to be at the free throw line and I'm going to make the right pass. Excellent. Like way better than I even expected. And a lot of us even expected him to be at that. That has already been an excellent skill for him, which is why we're all so high on it. But I think out of that, he's got to add a dunk or a floater to take a leap, to go from good starter to great starter. Like excellent. Feeling really good about what he can bring to the Mavericks. And how he takes, how he elevates the Mavericks. I think he's got to add something like that. So we saw it a couple times where he would get the ball, take a couple dunk, take a couple, take a couple dribbles and dunk. Right? We saw that a couple times last season, and it really like kind of surprised me in the moment. But then I was like, man, if he can put the ball down one dribble, and he's got big strides, so it wouldn't take long. It wouldn't take very, you know, he could go do it from a, a pretty far distance. One one dribble and dunk. One dribble and finish at the rim. 
one dribble and then a little floater or a little like shot, push shot over somebody. If he could do that out of the short roll, it changes the Mavs offense. And the Mavs would take a huge step forward offensively. And he's got to be just as good as he was in the short roll passing and all that. That's got to maintain from his rookie year. I think he also to take a leap for him, for the player that he is. I don't know that he's adding a bunch of post-ups where all of a sudden we go, man, you can dump it down to Lively or you can you know, give him the ball with, you know, with, with some space or whatever. you're not asking him to, you're not asking him to do that. But I think if he, if for him, I think he's got to take a couple threes to take a leap to really add a lot to the Mavericks. He's got to take, he's got to do that. So what would that do to the Mavericks? If Derek Lively took a big leap forward and did something like that, I think it would cover up any defensive weaknesses that the Mavs would have at least more easily. And I think if Derek Lively did that, it easily vaults the Mavs into a 55 win team, maybe even a, a 60 win team, depending on how big of a leap he was last season. When Derek Lively played, the Mavs were 35 and 20. That's a 52 win pace on last on last season's team. That's before Gafford, before PJ, before clay, before all that, a 52 win pace just with him last season. So 55, 55, you know, 58 wins, 60 wins is on the table. If he takes a leap, that makes them, that puts the Mavs in the next tier, puts them in a tier with OKC to me. If he takes a leap, if all of a sudden we go, man, that conversation Isaac had yesterday about Chet versus Lively is actually real, right? If that happens, boom. All of a sudden, we're talking about this team in a whole different light. And that's why he's super important to this team. A leap from him would be amazing. I don't know that we can expect that because growth is not always linear for some of these guys. Speaking of which, Jaden Hardy, what would a leap from him look like? I think it would be pretty great, but I'm going to tell you why exactly. Coming up. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up like Derek Lively wants to do to peak performance with superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, threes from the corner, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you need and what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, you always find... The, uh, the part that's going to fit your ride every time, or you get your money back. So if you want to make it easy on your car and make it the MVP, bring home huge wins, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. My first shot, my first make. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day for your second listen today. Go listen to Lockdown NBA. I was on there with Pat, the designer, today. It's his last show on Lockdown NBA. We had some fun. We did a full Counted Up episode. If you ever listened to the show, we do the most interesting, fun things in the NBA, so I just bounce around to a bunch of fun topics. So go listen to Lockdown NBA today, wherever you're listening, watching this show. Lockdown NBA is there every day with you as well. All right, Isaac, let's get into... Why Derek or how Derek or how uh, Jaden Hardy could take a leap? What if Jaden Hardy took a leap forward? Why could he? Why should we believe in a Jaden Hardy leap? Right? All right. Let me just let me just say this. Jaden Hardy was also just a one year in the G League guy. He didn't go to college. He played in the G League for the Ignite. A now failed experiment, I guess you could call it. They've ended it. Doesn't it's not going to exist anymore. And. So he didn't have the best like, like development experience growing up either. And so now he's been two years into the Maverick system and he just turned 22 years old. Listen to some of these guys that were just drafted this year. The Mavericks, Emmanuel Miller was drafted, but now the Mavericks have signed him. He, <laughs> he is 24 years old. <laughs> the guy, the, Emmanuel Miller, the guy that the Mavs just signed to the, to the training camp squad. <laughs> Cam Spencer was drafted by Detroit. He is 24. 24 years old. He's two years older than, than Jaden Hardy is. Baylor Shireman, the Boston Celtics drafted him in the first round. He's 24. Terrence Shannon Jr., same thing with the, the Timberwolves. He's 24 years old. These guys are all 23. Kevin McCuller of the Knicks. Tyler Kolick of the Knicks. Dalton Connect, the Lakers guy, is 23. He's a year older than Jaden Hardy. Tristan DaSilva, Jalen Bridges, Dylan Jones, all guys that we wanted in the draft that we talked about. Man, could the Mavs trade up in the second round? Could they get these guys? Could they bring in Dylan Jones? Jalen Bridges would be awesome as a wing. They're all older than Jaden Hardy. He's still really young. I know that we've seen him for now two years. We saw 48 games in his first year, 73 in his second year. That was kind of a down year for him. 
but he's still just, he just turned 22 in July. He's, he's still got some ahead of him. And it's not like we haven't seen any flashes from Jaden Hardy. We just saw him play a role in the Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals. He played 9.2 minutes a game in the Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals combined. Nine minutes is not nothing in an NBA game, in an, like an NBA playoff game. That means you were you were thrown out there and coach believed in you. And it could have been Dante Exum, but Jaden Hardy got the call because he stepped up. He also shot 40% from three in the playoffs, which I, it's, he, you know, it's not a, not a big sample size, but like he was making, he was hitting some shots. And I think Jason Kidd may believe in him because of that. Because of the playoffs, I think Jace, Jason Kidd may come into the season believing in Jaden Hardy a little bit more because he saw that. He did that kind of he did that at the end of last season when he saw Jaden Hardy play next to, to Luca and Kyrie. He believed in him a little bit more. And now I think with the playoffs, I think he'll believe in him a little bit more. The other thing about Jaden Hardy, and I was big on this last year, and I kind of dropped it during the season because his season wasn't going as well. But here's the thing: with guys like Anthony Simons, Jordan Poole, Tyler Hero, the types of players that Jaden Hardy is, the score first, get a bucket. Kind of athletic, but not like the most athletic guys. They all took a leap in year three or their 22-year-old season. Jordan Poole, leap in year three. He was 22 years old. The Warriors won the title in his third year. He played 19 minutes a game you know, in, in his second year, though. So that's kind of that's kind of one of those things where we're like, all right, well, Jaden Hardy didn't do that. Tyler Hero took a leap in year three. He was 22 years old. The Heat went to the Eastern Conference Finals in year three. He was playing a lot more than Jaden Hardy. So there's two examples of guys that were playing a little bit more. He played about 30 minutes a game in year two. But he played in the playoffs in year one, kind of the same as what Hardy did this year. Anthony Simons took a leap in year four. It took till year four for Anthony Simons to really take that leap forward. But he was 22 years old that, that season. He was you know, younger than Hardy. He played 17 minutes a game in year three and then 20 minutes a game in year two. So he, his minutes were up and down. These guys all took leaps in year three. They were not the players that we know them to be now in year two. They all kind of had a little bit more playing time than Jaden Hardy, so that's something that's ho- that's holding against him at this point. But not all those teams had the expectations that the Mavericks did. Warriors definitely did. The Heat probably did. The Blazers did not. So what would it take for Hardy to take a leap? For Hardy, it's very simple. For the other two guys, I took some time, and I really went through, and I was like, all right, what, what specific things do they need? For Hardy, it's very simple. He needs to make a massive decision-making improvement. Jaden Hardy has the skills. He can dribble, he can pass, he can shoot, he can get to the rim. It's all skills that he has. He's athletic enough. He can shoot really well. We just talked about 40% from three. He's got to make a better, he's got to make a big leap making decisions with the ball. And I think that comes with with practice, with development, and I don't think he got that in the G League And so I'm with the Ignite. And so I'm giving him a pass until... You know, until we see him again this year. But he's got to take that and, and take that a step for, further. How would it affect the Mavericks if Jaden Hardy made some kind of leap? What if he did make the leap like Jordan Poole did, like Hero, like Anthony Simons, like some of these guys? I think the Mavs are the best offense in NBA history. <laughs> Didn't we? We also have to remember it's still kind of a relative unknown because he wasn't that he wasn't great for the Lakers. As much as we expect him to come in and be the sixth man or be the the scoring guard off the bench and fill in that role really well. I think Jaden Hardy could Jaden Hardy, if he took a leap, could pass him and become the sixth man. I believe he could do that. Do I expect it? Probably not. But I believe he could do it. And then it takes a ton of pre- that takes a ton of pressure. If Hardy all of a sudden is like scoring 17, 18 points a game, and we're going, oh my gosh, this guy, how can we keep him off? The- Kid is like, how do I keep him off the floor? That's taking a ton of pressure off of Luca, Kyrie, and Clay. It's the same thing that Jordan Poole did in year th- in, you know, in year three. Taking pressure off those Warriors guys. Clay and Steph didn't have to, to score as much because Jordan Poole could just come in and they could take some quarters off. That'd be massive for the Dallas Mavericks. If he, take, if he takes that step forward, the Mavs offense becomes so much more potent. They were desperate for a guy like that. Do I expect this from, from Jaden Hardy this year? I don't think so. But it could happen. He's got the talent. He's got the pedigree. He just has to make a big, dis, like massive decision-making improvement. He's got to take a step forward in that area. That's definitely something he's, he's got to do, and we'll see if it happens. Let me know in the comment section on YouTube or on Spotify or on Twitter. Or Instagram, follow us on Instagram, at Lockdown Mavericks, by the way, at Nick Van Exit on Instagram as well. 
And uh, and let me know what you think about Jaden Hardy, what you think about the leap for these guys. And coming up, let's talk about Omax. We didn't see a lot of Omax on the on the Mavericks last season. He actually played more games than maybe you think he did. But we didn't see a lot. But what would a leap mean for him? I think it means the exact opposite of the Jaden Hardy leap. And I'll tell you why. Coming up. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account. And man, you can go to so many things. So many things all the time in DFW. Everywhere. I go to Game Time and I use it all the time. They have uh, New Orleans Saints at Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. $72. That is surprising to me that, that it is that low. Go and check it out on Game Time. They have deals available all the time. Views from your seat. All kinds of things like that. They have all kinds of other things. They already have Phoenix Suns at Dallas Mavericks on November 8th. $57, the cheapest ticket there. Range Mariners at Rangers. <laughs> Those tickets are significantly cheaper. And on Game Time, you can see all kinds of stuff viewed from your seat and all that. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Again, LOCKDOWNNBA, L O C K E D O N N B A is the code. What time is it? Download the Game Time app. What time is it? Game Time. Shut it down. Isaac, let's finish it up talking about what if these young guys on the Mavericks take a leap. By the way, these are the three youngest players in the Mavericks. Besides the training camp guys, and most of the training camp guys are older than these guys. Lively, Omax, and Hardy are the three youngest guys on the Mavericks. Still. That's why I'm talking about them. For Omax, why could he take a leap? Easily. His second year, he's developed his jump shot. He's really taken a lot of time on that. He's really worked on it. He shot pretty well in the G League last season. And I think that he definitely could could take a, t- some kind of a leap to go from a non NBA player to a fringe starter, fringe role play, like yeah, a, a role player. I think it could definitely be something that, that he could do. Last year for the G League night, he shot forty two percent from three on five threes per game. That's shown some promise to me. He definitely could take a leap forward. It's very easy to see why. For for Omax, what it, what it would take? This is something. It's a little different than, than Hardy. Hardy is like, you give me the ball, I got confidence, I'm gonna do this, but I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. Omax is like, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna run at it full full force. He needs the confidence. He needs an improved confidence in his jumper and his sure footing on defense. He needs to be a little bit more sure footed defensively. To he sometimes it was like he had like just happy feet all over the place on defense. Calm, control, like confidence. Those are the three C's that I'm given for Omax Prosperous. Have confidence in yourself and your jumper, your defense. Stay calm and controlled in that. And I think that he he could get there. And I think he will get there. I still I still believe in Omax, even though we didn't we didn't see it wasn't great in summer league necessarily. Even though some of the we didn't see a ton of flashes his rookie year. But how many games do you think Omax Prosper played last year for the Dallas Mavericks? I'll wait. Forty. Did not I did not see him playing half the games with Dallas Mavericks last season. Played a lot for the Legends though. I think he played thirty something games for the for the Legends. But yeah, he played he played he played, uh, he played forty games. He got into some of the the games late. Obviously, he got into most of the games that he did late. By the way, um, he had a twenty point game against Houston. You remember that one? No, you don't. Neither did I. How would it affect the Mavericks if Omax took some kind of a leap? If all of a sudden Omax went from not really an NBA player his first year, still developing to Man, this guy's a solid rotation player or even like a fringe starter where you go, man, we got to play Omax. He, he's really giving us some stuff. I think he could do that like Derrick Jones Jr. did last season. Derrick, Derrick Jones Jr. was a fringe rotation player last season. He was not. He was playing 14 minutes a game for the Bulls and took a step forward. Now, we had seen Derrick Jones Jr. on playoff teams before, like the Heat and the, you know, the Blazers and others. Little different situation, but... He didn't have the expect. He had the ex- same expectations as what Omax has this year, but all of a sudden now the Mavs they have a crowded wing rotation. PJ Washington, Najee Marshall, Quentin Grimes obviously include Clay in that. Omax, all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I'm feeling really good about our defense because if Omax takes a leap, that means you add a good defensive player into that group and a good defensive wing into the Mavs rotation. So why do I think it's the opposite of a Jaden Hardy? For Jaden Hardy, if he takes a leap, the Mavs offense becomes the best in NBA history. If Omax takes a leap, the Mavs are guaranteed to be top 10 defensively. I can't imagine if Omax took some kind of a leap, Lively stays the same, everybody else stays the same. 
Najee's as good as we think. Quinn Grimes is, you know, playing some kind of role. If all of a sudden you introduce Omax into, into a rotation, I don't know who he plays for instead. You'd have to really work on that. But I don't think you play that many good defensive players with this scheme and become a not top 10 defense in the, in the NBA. Do I, again, do I expect it for Lively? Yes, that, that he's the most likely. For Hardy, I don't know. It, it would have to be a, a really big leap. He would have to really develop, and he would have to, to really do some stuff, work on some stuff between the years to get him there. For Omax, same kind of thing. Work on stuff between the years. He has definitely developed that jump shot. That jump shot will be huge for him, but defensively, he's also got to be really good. And if he is, and he does take a leap, then all of a sudden, man, you've got a crowded winger, and Jason Kidd has some decisions to make. And wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great to have that problem where, okay, can you play Omax and Najee and PJ and Grimes? Clay still's got to get 30 minutes. Luka can somebody play forward because we got guards too. What a, what a problem to have for the Mavericks. He also makes some of these guys, you know, tradable later. And all of a sudden we can trade Quinn Grimes or we can trade. I don't know who else they would try. I guess they would trade Najee Marshall maybe. But then all of a sudden you're, all right, these guys are kind of expendable. The other thing about if Omax takes some kind of leap, then Maxi Kleba is not as is necessary anymore. You don't have to play him as much because they're going to play him mostly at the four, sometimes at the five. But if Omax can come in and play there and play at the four, then boom, all of a sudden you don't have to play Maxi as much. And that's probably the player that he would replace in the rotation is, is Maxi. Because the Mavs will go big centers all the time. Maybe they'll go small sometimes, but... Yeah, I'm interested to see that. Let me know in the comment section on YouTube. Let me know on Twitter, at Nick Van Exit, at Lockdown Mavs, at Lockdown Mavs on Instagram as well. What do you think? Who's most likely to take a leap? Who do you want to take a leap? Who do you expect to take a leap next season? And uh, we'll be back. Isaac and I will be back. We're going to do our board bets tomorrow. So we're going to go through all of like what we think the standings are going to be, awards, all that kind of stuff. We've done that every single year. We've got, I've got our spreadsheets all the way back to like 2017 <laughs> on here. So we'll talk about that and do all those so stick around subscribe or follow wherever you're listening watching this and uh stick with us on youtube as well guys thanks so much for listening to locked on mavs peace out boom